Well, I think the losses were a function of three things. Trump, abortion, and this cult of conspiracy, which a lot of Republicans bought into. And people went to the polls, and they did, actually didn't vote the economy. They voted people. Hmm. And uh, as a result, a lot of Republicans lost who shouldn't have been running to begin with. And I think this hurts Trump fundamentally. I, I would be very surprised if Trump were the Republican nominee in 2024. I, and he won't. He won't be the Republican nominee in 2024. This is going to be a very open field on the Republican right. side. I suspect it is on the Democratic side, too. I know the president says he's going to run for re-election, but he has to do that to avoid being a lame duck. He's not going to run for re-election. You don't think he's going to run? Oh, I don't think there's any way he can run. Bill, you think? Uh, you know, he said he hasn't decided. Yeah, but he uh, has told him people time. privately yeah. that he I, is. I, well, I believe he wants to run. But I think that there is an opportunity here with what's happened over the last 24 hours for him to take the next two years and see whether or not he can actually do something with the Republican leadership uh, and Democrats to get a few things done. Uh, the media is there, is there a Democrat you think that could emerge? Oh, I think if the president steps, was yeah, who yeah, absolutely. The I think you've got a handful. I think you've got Whitmer. I think you've got Newsom. I think Murphy will take a look at it. I think you'll see. Um, who did you? Uh, no, I, he's, that, that's everybody pushes that. him. Yeah, people love him. I, I mean, I, he's going to have to leave the cabinet real quick then to do that. Right. I, I don't. You know who that. people like uh, the new go the new governor overnight of Pennsylvania. Yeah. Yes, they like yes. him a lot. Yep. I, I I I I don't think it would be Trump or. Or Biden. I don't think the American people are going to get their wish. I really do. Can I yeah. ask? Trump's one? had nine lives. I think last night was. I don't know. I'm with. I'm with Judd on that. Don't you think? Absolutely. I. I think that this. The big if loser. Is 35 percent, Judd. 35 percent. You're not going to win an election with 35 percent unless unless we become Italy with like eight different. Prim well, the problem is you win though. primaries yeah. with 35 percent. Yeah. Right. So the what happened was people like in New Hampshire, we nominated right. two people who couldn't win in seats that we should have won. But you had to still fear. Donald, uh, McConnell feared Donald. Everybody feared retribution. If Not anymore. Now, now that he's def defanged. He's defanged at this And uh, we've yeah, gone beyond... I think we're going to go, yeah. we're gonna go yeah. beyond yeah. Trump fairly quickly as, as a party. There's so many people who want to be president in our party, and there's some quality people out there that are talking about it and obviously thinking about it. Front page of the Post, as you mentioned earlier. Uh, but they're a lot more than just DeSantis. The, the Republican establishment may feel like they can throw off the yoke of MAGA and Donald Trump, but it, there's still a base. There's a very that, big that, base of populism in our party, as there is in the Democratic Party, which is socialist, basically. But as a very practical matter, our base is a problem for us in nominating people who can win in the general election. And I think that's become very obvious to everyone. And so... I think this mutes that but, the intensity but you, but you of the even, conspiracy you theory in our voted, base. This goes back to what Barry was talking about the other day. We were talking, he said, I think people are going to vote based on the economy, but I wish and hope they vote based on character. You're saying you think they voted on character. I think that's character. exactly what happened. That's I, 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 you know, I look at what happened in New Hampshire. There were, our governor just rolled up a huge margin on character. And then two seats that we should have picked up, and the polls said they were dead even, by the way. Uh, we lost by fairly large numbers, and it was purely a vote on character. And, uh, yeah, people are upset about this economy. They're very upset about the economy. But people are more upset about the way the government functions in Washington. They're really disgusted with the way the government functions <laughs> but, in Washington. But let's get but, back but, to that point, though, because every time a party wins, no matter how big or slight the margin is, they take that as a mandate that their right. entire uh, platform needs to run, that they can run as far right or as far left as <clears> they <throat> think, and pass all kinds of things that tick off every. No party won this time. Uh, no. Uh, but, but I do think that when you look at the, the problem for both parties is they, they can't lose their base in a general election. Romney didn't get the MAGA voters in 12, even though lots of people thought after 10, uh, when the Republicans got 60-some seats in the House, that Obama was in deep trouble in 12, and Romney was going to beat him. But he didn't get his base. He didn't get the MAGA voters. They've got to hold those as the Democrats have to hold the progressives. Not an easy thing to, to do uh, after you go through a primary, if you're going to try to be a moderate and go through a primary as a Democrat, and then take certain stands, and then get back to the left or... Is the, the, is the problem happens. the primary system, or yes. is the problem that, you know, this country is very divided and you can't win? The problem, there's two bit. problems. Number one is gerrymandering, yeah. where we produce 65% of the districts are one-party districts, so the furthest right or the furthest left candidate is going to win that district, and they cannot, by... 
they cannot compromise. If they cross the aisle, they get challenged. The second problem is the shouting on social media. Social media is undermining thoughtful dialogue, any dialogue that's substantive in our country. I think social media is the single biggest threat to our democratic system right now. You had somebody on earlier this week who said that, uh, Zell, Sam Zell. Sam Zell. Yeah. And I thought he was just right on.